The hollow troll gas platform extends all the way to the seabed, nearly a fifth of a mile below the waves. With two thirds of the structure underwater, engineers needed to ensure the stormy seas stayed on the outside of the troll. Yep, that is quite a drop. And uh, if the view isn't enough to tell you all you need to know about how big these legs actually are, the fact that it's a nine minute elevator ride to get down to the bottom might do the job. I mean, nine minutes. Oh, well, it, it's meant to do that. It always does. minutes of this to get to the bottom. How far is it? The elevator travels down inside one of the troll's legs, right down to the seabed. I'm at the bottom of one of Trolley's legs, which puts me very deep indeed. That ceiling that I can see, way up there, isn't the top of the leg. In fact, that's barely a third of the way up. It's nearly three times further than that to the top. And that puts me on a level with the seabed. And the incredible water pressure down here doesn't just mean that these walls have to be immensely strong. They've also got to be watertight. The external pressure is around 500 pounds per square inch at the base of the platform, nearly a thousand feet below the waves. And even this six foot thick concrete would fail catastrophically if there were any weaknesses. Incredibly, it's the same problem that confronted American farmers in the Midwest more than a century ago. They needed strong watertight structures as well to store the mountains of grain produced across the Great Plains. Huge grain elevators were constructed of wood. But highly flammable grain dust and wood were a lethal mix as regular fires proved. They needed an alternative. In 1899, engineers in Minnesota created a revolution with concrete. Their pioneering technique was making concrete waterproof by avoiding joints or seams. Like the grain elevators, if engineers had constructed troll with joins in the concrete, it would have been fatal. So the question is, how do you make a huge concrete structure in the middle of the sea watertight? I pose the dilemma to Grant Schlerit, an engineer who knows all about structural failure. Concrete inherently is a flawless airtight material. What's important to know is that with any structure, if you have a small flaw, it can cause big problems. How small a flaw? Very small. Take this, say a piece of plastic, it's uh, bendable right now, it's not breaking. You can give it a try. Right, yeah, it's bendy. No flaws. No. Now if we add a, a flaw, just a small little cut. Well, that's it. That's it, do the same thing, give it a try. Look at that. <laughs> and that was it, that's enough. You can't have any flaws, it can cause big problems. Grant and his colleagues devise a test to show what might happen to trolls' legs if they had a small flaw. Firstly, they put a seam in a large plastic container and then reseal it. Then they fill the container with water and apply some pressure, explosive pressure.
everything is in place, one very, very slightly flawed water tank. System armed, it's live. Three, two, one. Wow. It went bang. Wow. Let's have a look. So what are we looking for, where and why? Well, you observe that there's a large gash in yeah, the it's, structure. It's broken. The flaw that we manufactured, we exposed it to a large force, and we see failure. So that small flaw, that join, has compromised the entire structure. That's right. And this could happen as well in a concrete structure, any type of structure, really. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Judging by that, just a small weakness in the concrete would be lethal for the troll. But Grant also wants to show me the solution. Simply avoid defects or weaknesses. So, round two. Will the exact same plastic stand the same pressure if it doesn't have a seam? System armed, it's live. Three, two, one. Did it sustain damage? Did it make it? Let's go see. Looks to be intact. I think you're right. It survived it. It did survive. And this is same conditions, same amount of water, same charge. Exactly same material, same. yeah. The only difference is that there's no manufactured seam, or a, a join, as we were calling it. And that was our floor, but our floor was where it was joined together. Yeah. And that's the same of concrete as it is of this plastic. That's right, the same principle. There's no flaw minimizing the chance for damage on a catastrophic scale. Flaws, or seams, are lines of weakness. But how did the troll engineers make a thousand foot high slab of concrete without a single seam? It's amazing, but even a brief pause in construction would leave a seam, which could be a lethal weakness on the troll. And the secret of building tall structures without ever stopping is to pour the concrete continuously. You need a mold that moves up the building as it grows. It's a cycle. Concrete is poured, then hydraulics anchored in the concrete structure itself raise the mold or shutter a few inches so that the pouring can start all over again. Underneath the rig, this is the shutter that contains the concrete that's being poured. It's a bit that they lift up. This is the fresh concrete that's been exposed underneath. In fact, we're moving now. Look, there you go. That's me, everything I'm standing on, everybody on top. We're all moving up to expose fresh concrete underneath. The process is called slip forming. Hydraulics move the mold up the building without any scaffolding. Still. It's still wet. It's still... It's not set yet. But it is amazing to think that they're still working above here. They're pouring new concrete at the moment. This is all just wet stuff that's just been poured in from the wheelbarrows. It's just so it's going off here, still soft. And down here, as the chemical reaction is taking place by which the concrete cures, it's warm. This building grows by eight inches an hour. It took six weeks to build the 600-foot chimney. Slip forming is the quickest way of building huge concrete structures. But even with ultra-fast slip forming, it still took almost a year to build the troll's mighty legs. Seamless concrete meant the platform could resist the crushing pressures of the sea depths.